first and foremost, I want to give all praises unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Dash, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, the world equally calls God, Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, the world equally calls Jesus Christ, He's coming back in their full power and wrath to destroy America, which is Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace, blessing, and mercy to the brethren around the four corners of the earth, pushing His word in sincerity and truth, never lifting their hands that plow to do the work diligently in the house of David, the elect. Uh, much love to you, few sisters and children listening in the middle. Alright, so the times that we're in, so many people believe that uh, Shai did not come back for the children of Israel and did not, uh, he's not going to be that refreshing uh, water and that refreshing ointment and the, the true element of life that the children of Israel need to sustain. Okay, and with this being known, you know, so many, so many men and so many women, you know, they have uh, articles now about Great Millstone saying that the, the men of Great Millstone prophesied that the Messiah is going to return and destroy uh, so-called black women in the masses. Okay, and, and honestly, that that's not all, you know. Uh, but the Messiah is a so-called black man uh, who the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ and he is going to destroy so-called black women with the masses but that's not just so-called black women it's going to be uh, all nations honestly man even the nation of Israel so-called black women so-called Hispanic women so-called Native American women and men as well from that nation you know the uh, so-called white man Asian and woman and child the so-called Asian man woman and child the so-called Arabic man woman and child the so-called African man woman and child the Lord is going to come back to destroy many, man. All right, and that's prophesied in Isaiah 66 and 15. But uh, with this lesson, I want to talk about how the, how the waters are important to us and how Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, is the Lord and Savior, and has given and is that new breath of life, man. You know? All right, I'm going to start off with uh, John 7 and 37. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Yahweh Shai stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. All right, so Yahweh Shai is like, if you're thirsty, man, come unto me and drink. You know, and he's not like uh, these places that these baseball and concession stands, you know, where he has a cup of water saying, come unto me and I can, you know, make you physically hydrated. Okay? Reading on. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. All right, so you got to believe on Yahweh Shai as the scriptures have said, okay? So many people are coming in the doctrine that Yahweh Shai didn't exist. When it says that he came in the volume of the book, uh, they'll, they'll say that Yahweh Shai isn't a so-called black man. And we're going to get that. Uh, but let me see if I can turn to the Hebrews. You know, because... It says you have to believe on the Lord as the scripture has said. You can't believe on the Lord the way you see fit. All right, this is starting off, this is Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. All right, so it says, for it is evident. All right, when you have evidence, something is strong, something is known, it's proof. That our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah, man. And you know, the tribe of Judah are known as the so-called African-Americans, the so-called black men. Right? That's the tribe of Judah, the true Jews, according to the Holy Bible, man. Not the gutter rats who have stolen our identity. Okay? So it says, for it is evident that he sprang out of the tribe of Judah. So I mean, he has to have characteristics and attributes that the so-called black man has here in America. Alright? So uh, let me get 1 John 5 and 10. He that believeth on the Son of the Most High hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not hath made him a liar. All right, so if you don't believe on Yahweh Shai, if you don't believe on Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, all right, it says you are a liar, man. And we know that the world is full of liars and hypocrites, and all of them shall be put to death in the day of the Lord. Okay? It says, because he believeth not the record that the Most High, Yahweh, gave of his son. Okay, so they don't believe on the record that he gave. You have to believe on the record. The record is the Holy Scriptures. What is the identifier of how uh, Yahweh Shah Mashiach looks in the Bible? You can't go based off of the pictures that they painted during the Renaissance time to be painted after Chesaree Portion. Okay, it says, and this is the record that the Most High have given us to given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life. And he 
that have not the Son of the Most High have not life. So these people are deprived of life, man. Deprived of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. All right? Because they only see with fleshly things, with carnal things. Only see these things with their eyes. And even though we're lifting up the standard, telling the truth in these last days, man, these people have been so indoctrinated into the understanding of the, uh, the wickedness of this world and the uh, oppression and false doctrines and philosophies that the so-called white man, which are the Edomites, have put on the four corners of the planet. And so that's the case, they believe on, on how uh, they said so-called Jesus Christ looks not as the record. You have to take the record of how it looks. Man, this is the record. This is uh, Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach, the so-called who were able to call Jesus Christ, which the Most High gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So revelation means to reveal. So they're about to reveal the revealing of the Lord, man, of the Messiah. Okay? And it says, who bear record of the word of the Most High and of the testimony of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach and of all things that he saw. Okay? So after that, John the Revelator uh, wrote everything down. It says, who bear the record of the Most High. All right? So John the Revelator was about to write down everything that he saw, man. Okay? And so I'm going to jump down to verse 13. I'll start at 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So, uh... John the Revelator, he's seeing a vision, you know, uh, he's been, he's in, he's full of the Holy Spirit right now, okay? And he says, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So the first thing he sees seven golden candlesticks, or which are known as menorahs. It says, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, or right, who's the Son of Man? So in the midst of that, he saw a person, one like unto the Son of Man. So who's the Son of Man? The Messiah, man, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. It says, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. So he had a gird, he had on a, a garment like this, you know, with fringes on the end, down to his feet. Okay? And he said, gird about the paps with a golden girdle. So in war times, men wore uh, girdles of, uh, of metal as a form of armor to protect uh, your important organs, man. All right? You know, because if you get, they have stories of men who've been stabbed in the stomach, like uh, when Ehud stabbed Eglon, the Moabite king, you know, and the dirt came out of it, the, uh, the feces came out of his stomach. So you had to have girdles on to protect you. Okay? It's in his head and his hairs, which means his beard and the hair on his head, were white like wool. All right? So it says, first it gives a uh, color and then it gives a texture. So white meaning when you see like a, a so-called old man, an elderly man, and he has a head full of gray hair, all right? So this signifies the Lord's uh, wisdom, all right? And it says uh, white like wool. So who on the face of the earth has been known to have woolly hair, okay? The so-called Negro, which is evident that he came out of the tribe of Judah, man. Okay, woolly, woolly, nappy, coarse hair. Okay, so he had woolly hair. So, you know, those are strikes against the blonde or brown streaky uh, straight hair that they show of Cesare Borgia in the churches. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. All right, so he had red eyes, okay? And so, uh, that's prophesied. So everybody like, why do he have red eyes? This is how you know he's spoken about in the beginning. This is Genesis 49 and 12. All right, this is talking about Yahweh Shah. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. All right, so he had red eyes because the Lord was grieved for the things that was happening to the children of Israel and the great judgment that was about to fall them and him. All right, the death that he had to take on behalf of the children of Israel to die for our sins and we're so important. Okay, but his eyes were red with wine. All right, because he drank wine. He wasn't an alcoholic. He was not a wine bitter. But he did drink wine. When you drink red wine, your eyes turn red. But also, the coming, he's coming in fierceness and anger to pour out his indignation upon this earth for the things that they've done to the children of Israel and to him. It says, his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass. 
So his feet was like unto fine brass, man. All right, the brass is a derivative of brown. All right, so that right there, that cuts the so-called white man picture that they show you uh, in churches and across the four corners of the earth. So that's a derivative of brown. So he's already a so-called brown man. And we know he came out of the tribe of Judah. These are all cuts to show that his, show his appearance. And many times people will say he's Middle Eastern or he was olive colored. All right, so the Lord did this next sentence purposefully to cut anything that he could be someone that was lighter. Okay, it says, and as if they burned in a furnace. So when you saw, when you see a man's feet, his feet are the same color as the rest of his body. So it said his feet look like they burned in the furnace, man. All right, so if somebody's feet look like they burned, if you throw anything, just about anything in a furnace, it's gonna turn a very, very dark color. All right, so he was a very dark-skinned brown man. All right, which is the so-called black men are not black. We are different, the children of Israel are typically uh, different shades of brown, different complexions of brown. And the rest of the nation, I mean, the Edomites are red, all right? And it says, and his voice as the sound of many waters, man. Okay, so imagine this tenfold, because the Lord, his, he was spoke very loud. What do they always say? So-called black people, they are too loud, all right? They're too loud, they, they speak very loud. That's what, like when he be speaking to the, five, the multitude, man. You know what I'm saying? There were 5,000 men there, 5,000 men alone, not speaking about women and children. So he spoke very loudly, man. All right, let me just check the camera, Salaki. 